Hi, Pafava here, and I'd like to tell you about my new book, Accidental Rebel. It's, uh, for me, it's been a fascinating journey to write this. It takes me right from my earlier childhood, right up to today. It'll bring you on a journey from the poor stricken streets of the north side of Cork City, where I was brought up, where my grandmother beat into me as a young child, if you think you can, you will, and if you think you can't, you won't. It also shows how with self-belief you can achieve anything. I was told once that we were far better off poor, but my grandmother gave me a clatter, thump, like this, when a grandmother could. And I remember she brought me into her front room, it was only 15 feet across, or four meters, and she stood me in front of four pictures. There were always iconic pictures at the time for all the people in Ireland. There was the Pope, the Sacred Heart, our president at the time was Emmon de Valera. And she caught me and she put me in against each of those and said, you see all of those? I said, yes, Nan. And then she put me to the forward person. And she said, see that guy up there? I said, yes, Nan. And she said, that's the most powerful man in the world. And I just want to tell my grandson, he's as good as him. Well, with that in mind, I left school at 15 to become a millionaire. Well, I was a bricklayer. But I did, through pure belief, achieve my goals by the time I was 22. I was that multimillionaire I set out to be. Only to lose it all because of the fact of being obnoxious, over-trading, and not really knowing too much about business in 1986, where I did try to take my own life. And from there, a journey began that changed my life forever. I took up hill walking and on my second time on the hill one of the lads that brought me out, Valdine, turned to me and he said are you okay Pat? And I shook him and I hugged him and I said Val I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Well since that day which was in 1986 my adventures have taken me all around the world the highest, the coldest, the loneliest, the most remote places on planet earth. I have lived and I have worked with over 32 different tribes of people and culture and nationalities. And I've learned from them that we are all the same. There is no difference between us. I've had a chance to reenact all my heroes' expeditions, the likes of Shackleton, Crean, Amundsen, Hilary and Tenzing, Mallory and Irvin. I've been, and it always amazes me, to think that I was a bricklayer living in my grandmother's house overlooking Cork City and watching planes. I have been to the top of the world, Mount Everest, Chumalungma. I know what it feels like to cross that ridge that was one time pushed with great tectonic forces from the bottom of the sea to the top of the world. I have stood on top of Mount Everest twice on that sacred sand patch of ground that's only the size of your kitchen table five and a half miles up. I've had the opportunity to walk across Greenland, to walk to the South Pole from the edge of the continent, to reenact and to go beyond that of Shackleton. My adventures have given me such joy over all those years, but most importantly, as I was doing these expeditions, I started as the apprentice, then I became the master and eventually, as my time now goes into my 60s, I have become a mentor. And it is that which I love. So this book is about success, failure, fear, pain, passion, love and death. As well as most importantly, the reflection of myself now after finishing this book and yet it finishes on what's next because I have lots left in me. I now reflect on what's about to come. I do hope that if you read this book, whether you're an armchair traveler, an adventurer, interested in science, interested in global warming, climate change, that you will enjoy the stories I tell of a lifetime of adventure as I have lived my dreams and tried to make them a reality as an accidental rebel.